Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion. Today we're going to take a look at the GTX 580 Direct CU2 graphics card from Asus. And of course the Direct CU refers to the cooling solution. You can see in the preview over there. There's two fans sold and the Direct CU is the copper heat pipes that are directly connected to the core, cooling it properly. And of course you have a slight overclock of 782 MHz the core from the default 772 so essentially a 10 megahertz overclock also has 5 mega 5 1.5 megabytes of GDDR5 memory RectX 11 compatible and of course the super alloy power that Asus has implemented in all the direct CU2 graphics card the back of the box you can see a little more promotional information the direct CU2 promises 20% cooling fan design. See the direct CU refers to the direct co GPU contact copper heat pipes are about 5 total the graphics and so we're going to take a look at that later once we open it up and you also have the Asus Super Alloy Power which is a combination of uh, select components to produce a better cooling performance, a cooler operation, I mean rather a uh, longer lifespan and a 15% performance boost over the reference design and of course the voltage tweak technology allows to boost GPU voltages according to this by the Asus Smart Doctor but uh, Asus has also released a new software which is a lot better which is the GPU tweak software available on Asus website it is compatible with not just ROG video cards but also any other video cards even non Asus branded video cards and here you can see a quick overview of what we can expect from the Connectors at the back, you have a DVI connector, actually a pair of them, and also you have an HDMI and a display port. And also it shows a VGA uh, compatibility, so that means it includes a VGA converter inside. Now let's open up the box and see what we can find inside. Inside you can find a black box and only the Asus logo in gold letter in the middle. Just flip it open see that the first thing is the documentation right in the middle that's embedded in this styrofoam and let's open it up and see what we can find of course you have the driver CD and the manual also inside we have the older versions of the driver here which is 263.09 as of the time of this review we are using the 275.33 of the HQL driver, so I suggest downloading that from NVIDIA's website. And you also have this speed setup for a graphics card, it comes in multiple languages. And basically, you only need the first two. Shows you uh, if you're not familiar with graphic card installation, it's just basic, it covers a basic uh, outline of how to install it and then various connector devices. Let's put that away back into the folder. Inside we have the graphics card itself inside and a static bag where we we'll take a look at the accessories in this compartment here in the lower right hand corner. We have the two six pin to eight pin power. Play your DVI to VGA converter. And you also have an extra long SLI connector. Once out of the packaging, first thing that is obvious is that the GTX 580 Direct CU2 is much larger than other GTX 580 video cards. You have your dual fan solution, and the Direct CU2 cooling solution itself actually takes up three slots inside your case. You can see, take a quick look at the back, the entire top air is for exhaust. While you have your dual DVI ports, your HDMI 1.4 port for 3D, and also your display port, which is not usually available in uh, NVIDIA graphics cards, but Asus has decided to put it in their direct CU2 graphics card. And let's see what the power connectors are. You have two 8 pin power connectors instead of the 8 and 6 pin on the reference design means the Asus GTX 580 Direct CU2 
can draw more power if you need it if you want to overclock and you also have two SLI fingers rear for quad SLI configuration and let's see that the you can actually see how uh, thick it is compared to uh, the graphics card it's rather heavy too so uh, best part is that uh, if it doesn't have this back plate included that ASUS has put in it will actually bow down so that's it is it's a good design that the ASUS included a back plate that wasn't available in the reference design and uh, as you can see the memory chips unfortunately don't have heat sinks on top of them although with the with two fans blowing in the top you can still they still uh, get some cooling in there and uh, let's actually open up this graphics card and see the components in the PCB how uh, Asus arranged the super alloy power inside the direct CU2 GTX 580 graphics card to open up the Asus GeForce GTX 580 direct CU2 graphics card you will simply unscrew the four screws at the back of the GPU and uh, if you're going want to do this at home I advise using of course all the anti-static safety precautions and to unscrew it in a crisscross fashion so I have a little less load on the GPU and the PCB and also make sure to keep track of the screws that you remove that's removed you just simply slide it off it will now there's a glue or uh, rather the thermal interface material acts as a glue so it, depending on uh, on how you move it it might be a little bit difficult to remove in some instances but, uh, in this instance it wasn't too hard and uh, now we can actually see the inside the PCB and the cooling solution itself. You can see that there are five flattened copper heat pipes directly in contact with the GPU core and there's two sets of aluminum fins that are cooled underneath by the two fans. Let's uh, move it aside. Let's try to remove the... It's a little bit difficult to remove the plug so let's just rotate it for now. See that the back plate is actually removed last instead of the of removing the uh, back plate first compared to other uh, back plate solutions. So you, if you want to remove the back plate, you have to remove the top first and unscrew it here from the front. Now that won't be necessary since all we need to look at is actually right here on the front. With all the heat sinks removed, we can take a closer look at the VRM circuitry in detail. Of course, you can see that there are these MOSFETs high quality components you can take up a little bit more a little less profile than the regular MOSFET design they also operate about 35 degrees cooler and you also have the high quality Japanese capacitors and your solid core chokes now an important thing about these chokes is that they are filled in unlike the regular chokes which actually whine if you if you've experienced it before with your graphics card if you had a graphics card that would uh, whine if, if you apply more voltages or uh, under benchmarking under uh, like say firm mark you can hear an audible whine that means the it was vibrating inside now these chokes are actually solid core so you will not hear that since it's filled in there's no room for air to come out and uh, of course you have these fuses for uh, safety precaution for your right directly near your uh, power supply connectors and uh, they're over current protection over voltage protection just in case you have a power outage or a power spike or you're under necessarily you want you want voltage protection especially if you're overclocking and you also have your voltage regulator here your SHE voltage regulator the important thing is that also uh, you don't forget that the back directly at the back of the GPU is the NAC token protolyzer capacitor. If that is located farther on the GPU, it won't it won't be as, as effective because of the power loss. 
Now the importance of having a the super alloy power the VRM circuitry that is as robust as this as it is much more effective when overclocking. Keep in mind that even though there is a back plate there is actually no contact between the memory chips in the front of course as you can see and even in the back so don't rely on the back plate to act as a heatsink for your memory chips. You might however add a thermal pad maybe in between try to open it up and modify it yourself but the stock rather the factory default of the GTX 580 DirectCU2 does not come with a cooling solution on the memory chips.